Hello and welcome to Quackalope, thank you for being here. Today I'm bringing you a gameplay video of Dragon Eclipse, but not a full campaign video, don't worry. We have other ones of those, but in the campaign, in Scenario 2, there are three potential bosses and three playable, catchable creatures or characters. Emberling being one of them and Bulb being another. I wanted to showcase here in a series those three boss fights and the unique mechanics they have, those three creatures and the unique way they fight because they really do have different ways to approach combat and do so in a more tight, more condensed, more restricted format. So this is just a boss fight. Won't have a lot of narrative, won't have a lot of flavor text, won't have a lot of A and B choices. It'll set up very quickly and show you how the game runs. Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, Dragon Eclipse is going to be, or is, a game that's built around the framework of exploration and boss battles or dungeon crawl style showdowns where you're fighting against different creatures. It's a deck building game where you're going to be opening up packs of cards, building your creature deck, and expanding your pool of available resources. You'll then have a marketplace of cards that you can use to attack, battle, and faint, and you'll have a creature that has their own AI that you're going to be going up against. It's a solo or two-player core game, and every single card is built within the base game. So while you will be opening up packs, it's not a TCG or an LCG. So that's what this video series is. There's going to be three of these videos. They're going to show off the bosses without you having to watch a lot of extra stuff. It's going to give me an opportunity to play them one more time because I want to explore these mechanics a little bit deeper, and it'll give me an opportunity to play each one of the creatures against the various bosses, some of which I didn't see in my campaign because, of course, the narrative shifts and changes, and you don't always see everything in every game you play. All right, well, that's my general premise. <clears throat> that's my general setup. Uh, now I think we need to go ahead and get started. By the way, I have a little bit of a tickle in my throat, uh, like a perpetual tickle, so I have a coffee. You'll have to be patient with me uh, when I take a drink. And, just for the record, we are doing sponsored work with Awaken Realms, some of the gameplays, the previews, stuff like that. But these videos are just kind of extra things that I wanted to do to help support the campaign and to uh, dive deeper into this and bring more information to you, the audience. So hopefully you enjoy them. If you do, leave a comment down below, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll have more content coming your way. All right, let's talk about where we are. In the campaign so far, we've explored, the town's been disrupted, we've seen a giant shadow hover over the ground a dragon, naturally, creating a eclipse, a <laughs> dragon eclipse, and we are now out here hunting for creatures in this wilderness. Now, this is part of the exploration phase of the game, but I wanted to show you the very introduction to each one of these creatures we fight, so you have a sense of how we get sucked into it. I'm going to go to location 49 here. Oh, and by the way, my deck is upgraded at the same point that it was in the campaign, and I do have a few items available to me based off of what I had explored and gained during the course of the campaign. So. We're going to keep everything about like that because it feels about the most fair way to make mid-game or where I am in this game uh, balanced. <coughs> okay. Uh, the damp and soft soil slowly turns into a wetland. There are more tracks left by large and even feet. Something prowls around this area. Something dangerous. Explore the marsh. Go to script 69. So this is a little exploration book. This is where we're going to be going through the narrative and jumping between texts, making choices, etc, etc. When you see bubbles appearing on the water surface, you know that the time for a fight is coming. You take a step back and ask your creature to prepare. Soon, a creature covered in mud and algae emerges and bellows loudly. Place the map aside. So, this is where we're going to be moving this map off to the edge. Our time card and our secret card will remain with it, because you might jump back into exploration. Fights might just interrupt this story. They might not be the uh, official way that you transition. Uh, reminder, do not discard the secret from the event and the time slot marker. Set up the combat arena. Prepare the combat deck using arena card 4. So arena card 4 here. After each of your moves, discard one card from the top of the item deck. If that card has a eclipse, you gain immobilize. Immobilize means your next move, shift, whatever it is, is cancelled. the end of combat, flip over this card. Uh, we have prepare your enemy. Use cards 39, 40, and 41. This is going to be the bulb over here. So we have cards 
39, 40, and 41. So the cards that we have here, we have the Bulb. The Bulb is a giant uh, kind of a forest creature. I really like him. I really want to capture him. 40 health, 1 defense, 2 attack, 1 movement. Passive, the Bulb has plus 1 attack for each 5 damage on its card. So it's going to get stronger and stronger. Has three core attack abilities and a special ability. If the opponent has immobilized, blink to its space adjacent to the opponent and attack. Otherwise, the opponent gains immobilize. <coughs> General setup rules here. Place a special ability token in the second space. So that blink ability will happen every time. And then my abilities to tame bulb, which will be my goal. I don't know if it's possible. I got annihilated the last time I played this guy, so... We'll have to see. Uh, one catches attention by dealing him at least 15 damage. 15 out of his 40. Each time Bulb deals at least one damage to me and I survive, place one marker on this card, have four total markers on this card. Set this guy back over to the side. The cards line up in a pattern. We need to build the enemy deck, which is going to be two of each type of card. So two swivels, two triangles, and two star spears. Not the official names, just the names that I came up with as I was looking at those shapes. And then I place my creature in our lovely Space 1. I am going with our Emberling in this fight. I will be using other creatures in other fights in the future. But Bulb versus Emberling. I want to recreate this battle. Like I said, I got annihilated the last time. So I think it's worthwhile. Uh, if I have a Wind... I'll gain one ember and then discard it. I did have a wind at this point, so I'll go ahead and give myself one ember. I think I'm going to give myself about one ember per battle, but I'm also going to give myself some damage. I wish I had a die to roll. I don't have a die immediately. I have 14 health. I'm going to give myself three damage. Um, I was much more damaged when I fought this creature before. I don't know if that's going to be the, the, you know, the big make or break. I think there's got to be ways to mitigate damage and heal yourself a little bit more and go in a little bit more prepared than I had been. But we'll see. Uh, close the adventure journal and start the combat. So, we are jumping <coughs> right into a combat. That's how quick it goes between adventuring and combat. It's just a matter of reorganizing and pulling a few things out. So, the way that bulb works, he is going to have his enemy deck, and he's going to take an enemy deck action. I will know what attack he's going to be doing. So right now, with this card here, he is going to be doing a rush and then attack. So he's going to move one to me, then he's going to attack me. So if I back up, he won't be able to reach me on this first attack hit. Now, the core premise of the game, good. I have one fatigue card in my deck, and I drew it immediately. You're going to have uh, these ember, these resources, these power across the top of your marketplace here, and you're going to be taking cards and gaining the resources adjacent to them. You're able to spend those resources on basic actions, so I have my fire element basic actions here. Move, discard, draw a card, and attack. <coughs> and that's like that's the core kind of operational flow of the game. My Emberling, by the way, has a special move called Fire Nova, uh, which deals for seven power. Um, I'm going to deal, or for eight power, I'm going to deal seven damage to each opponent within range three. So good and powerful, but my base attack is actually 5, so 4 damage per base attack. So I could get 8 damage out of just 2 base attacks with that same price. So I'll keep that in mind. Okay, cards that I have here. Flame Burst. Deal 2 damage to each opponent in range 2. Deal 2 additional damage for each power I have. For each 4 power I have. Changeling. Gain 1 power. If this card is in the 3rd slot, gain an additional 2 powers. That seems valuable right now because it is in the 3rd slot. Blind Fury. Attack. You may gain two damage to attack again, and then fatigue. Remove this card from play. I am going to go ahead and spend one to remove this card and to go ahead and place another card down here. Shoot forward. Move, move, move. That'll give me a lot of move because my base move is two, six total. I'm then going to go ahead and take and activate the changeling card. This is going to give me a total of two from the top and two from the card itself, or three from the card itself. So five now, which is kind of where I want to be, and I want to back off, so I'm going to use this to move one, and I'm going to take a step back. So Bulba is going to go, pulling a card. He's going to move forward with his rush, and then he's going to attack. He's not able to hit me at the moment, so it won't be a concern. 
His next attack, however, is going to be a rush, then peel two damage and immobilize in range two. So I either want to get out of here, or I just want to get close and go ahead and punch him in the throat. <clears throat> he's also going to have a special ability where he's going to blink uh, to me, try to immobilize me, and attack. So if I get away from him so he can't reach me, I'll be in a position where he will blink to me, which means the next turn I'll be set up for a little bit of a stronger attack. I think with the move, move, move ability, that might be the way to go. And if I get back here to this corner, he won't be able to reach me, or I could get over here to the other side of the board. So I'm going to take shoot forward, move, move, move. <coughs> I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, pull my way over to the other side, and go ahead and gain two more ember, or crystals, whatever it is. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, now he's going to go. So triangle. He is going to rush, moving towards me, deal two damage and immobilize within range two. He is not within range two, so it's not going to happen. But now he's going to be triggering a special ability because that is where that marker is. If the opponent has immobilize, we don't. Otherwise, the opponent gains immobilize. So I'm going to gain a inability to move. So my next move action will be will be canceled. But that might be okay, depending on what he's doing next. Next, he's going to attack, then rush. So he's going to attack first, then take a step closer to me. So I kind of want to position myself. I want to maneuver around him a little bit. Flame Burst won't work, because I'm not within a range of two. Strike won't work. I think Defensive Stance might be the play right now. I'm going to go ahead and spend one to remove that Immobilize. Again, it cancels my first move, so I did a move action there. Removed Immobilize. <sighs> as much as I don't like doing it now, I'm going to take Defensive Stance. It's going to give me two back, one from the top, one from the card, and it's going to go ahead and trigger a passive ability I now have two blanket defense until I have another card pop out on top of that deck. <coughs> Good, I just got my Lava Lash out here. This is one of my new cards. Now Bulb is going to go ahead and take a shift forward. He is going to attack, then he is going to rush. So taking a step forward. He's very angry, very big. I don't want to be around him. That's what I'm picking up on. His next ability is going to be a rush and then an attack. So I'm probably going to get hit at this point. <coughs> so it's time to double down on uh, what I need to do to take him out. The first part of the puzzle is 15 damage. So, let's go ahead and take... I don't have any cards that trigger... Ooh, okay, Lava Lash should allow me to trigger another card, actually. I kind of want that to grow in here, though. So I'm going to start with a move, spending one, to step forward by two, a blind fury, which is gonna give me two back. You may attack, I'm going to attack for five, dealing four damage, because he has one defense. I then may gain two damage myself, which I will go ahead and choose to do, bringing me up to five damage, which is a third of my total health, to, to attack again, dealing another four damage. So eight total damage. We're about halfway to where we need to be to capture him. Okay, I'm going to shift these cards forward and he's going to go ahead and go with his next activation. So this card's going to pop down here. We are looking at a rush and then an attack. He's going to stay right where he is. He's going to turn towards me. He's going to attack me. Attack power of two. I have no basic defense. So I'm going to be going up to seven total damage on my card. Then He's going to be triggering a special ability. If the opponent has immobilize, I do not. He is going to give me immobilize again. Which isn't really what I want, but it's better than being attacked by him a second time. I am right next to him now, so I should be able to get a good hit in. I have strike. I also have flame burst. Flame burst is actually going to deal a decent amount of damage right now. Um, so I think I'm going to trigger it. It's going to give me three more these embers. It's going to pop over here, deal two damage to each opponent within range two, then deal an initial two damage for each four I have. I'm currently sitting at 11, so it's just going to be an additional 
six damage. He has... Oh, this is going to be unblockable, I believe, because it's just cubes. It's not uh, fancy-looking stuff. He's sitting right now at 14. I'm going to go ahead and spend four to do another attack, pulling him up a little bit higher to uh, just under 20, to 19 or 18, and I have successfully given him 15 damage. So now I need to survive four attacks from him which I think I'm actually going to be able to do. It'd be good to have some defensive cards in, because I'm going to be getting close to my max health. Um, but let's go ahead and start this process. <clears throat> so, he's going to be attacking me. Attack, hitting me for two. Okay, then rushing. He's not going to be moving. Back over to my turn. The question is, how can I... Where can I get as much defense as possible? I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. Um, I feel like maybe continuing to beat him up is a reasonable decision. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do this strike ability, gain one extra, so I'll gain four more of these. Um, and that's going to give him, or give me an attack, which is going to give him four more damage. So I'll steal a cube and bring over another five. Shuffle these. <sighs> bring them out onto the table. Okay, I'm really looking for my defensive card, because blocking his attacks would be a valuable thing. And I do still have that immobilized token on me, but I, I think I want to use it because I need to take an attack anyway. So, triangle is going to go. Triangle is going to result in rushing, deal two damage. Oh, uh, Each time a blob deals at least one damage, and you survive, place a marker on this card. So, there's one marker so far. Deal two damage and immobilize in range two, so he's going to be dealing two more damage to me. I am going to be really close to death. I'm going to be really close. That's going to be another marker here, though. Then he's going to be doing a special ability, which is because I already have immobilized, is going to result in him punching me in the face for two more damage and a one more marker. I think I'm going to be able to capture him, but I'm going to be one hit away from death. So if I started with even slightly more, if I started with slightly more health or uh, if I had um, any more... Uh, items. I would have maybe had to spend some resources early on to get a few more attacks quickly. I think that's the name of this game: is you got you got to hit him fast and hard, and then kind of ride it out a little bit. But I do not have the health to take this amount of punishment. Okay. From here, I'm going to go ahead and take energy flow. I will gain a resource for every slot to the side, so that'd be two plus uh, two from the top. So four more of these resources. I've got a lot of them. I've got enough to do my special ability. He's sitting right now at about 22 health. So, I mean, I could get him close to death right now. I could pull him up to like 30, 38, but I think I want to take this last hit. Um, he's going to hit me one more time. I'll be taking two more damage. Oh, no. I need to get out of here. Two more damage would max me out. I didn't even notice that. So, if I don't, if I don't get out of here, I'm actually in a bad spot. So, I... Sh oh... What's he going to be doing? He's going to be doing a rush and then attack. So he's going to be moving one and attacking. Right now, he can reach me everywhere I am. I was overconfident. So this card needs to go back. I'm going to be taking Flaming Bite because he's going to give me a move. One, two. Uh, I need to put back four of these from that card that I took. I need to spend one to go ahead and move again. One, two. I need to get away from him until I have a defensive card out here. But my defensive card, let me just check this, blocks two, right? Passive plus two block. So either way, I'm going to be taking a hit. Okay, uh, when you attack, add one to your combat strength. When an enemy attacks, add one to defense. I'm going to have to use this. This is the only way. I'll keep standing right here. This is going to resolve the end of the battle, but that this is really, really close. I have an item that I found called Blotchy Nuts. Uh, during combat, discard this card. When an enemy attacks, add one to all defensive locations. It's the only way, because I need to take one damage, but not two damage. So I'm going to be taking one damage. I'll be one health away from Exasperated. <clears throat> and this is going to pop down here. That's going to be the end of combat. And we'll go ahead and resolve the story. So, 
If you tamed the enemy, go to script 83. Never tamed this enemy before. So it feels good to have done it, but that was... If I started with any different amount of health, I mean, there, there was really... It's either destroy it or be in the perfect position and time it out. Awesome. The moment the hulking predator sta stops fighting you, you smile. You know you've won. The bulb sits on the ground and looks at you curiously as you call off your creature and stroke its head and show it your gratitude for its help. You approach the bulb, extending your hand slowly and ready to dodge if it decides to attack, but it doesn't. Instead, it touches you with a dirty paw. A good start, you would say. If you spend more time together, you think you can make a connection. You hope this victory will also scare away other predators, at least temporarily. Open the creature study, place card 38 and 39B into the divider. Place the bulb creature cards in his quest card, not available in this demo, with all his action cards, not available in this demo, into the party tray, close the creature study. So, we've successfully beat him, we've calmed him down a little bit, distracted him along the way. Whew. That was close. If I just went head to head, taken hits back and forth, hadn't maneuvered, manipulated, hadn't used the items, the resources I had, there's no, I would have been crushed again. And I went into this more prepared than I was last time. Um, so, uh, good on him. All right. There you have it. There's a quick little one shot, a showcase of how the bulb and the emberling works. The next game I'm going to be playing is going to be fo focusing on the Earth Elemental, our lovely Golmo. Uh, he has a much different mechanic. And I think we're going to be going ahead and fighting the uh, Elkhorn here which is another one of the beasts that you can find along the way. So that's currently the plan. Never fought the Elkhorn before, so stay tuned and uh, come check it out. Looks like I'm going grass type versus grass type, which doesn't seem like maybe the best, doesn't seem like maybe the best play. Uh, the other option I have is Iceling, and the other creature I have to fight, in case you all are curious about who else I might be battling, is... A lovely furwing. So furwing looks like ice. What if I do Iceling versus the Elkhorn, and we do uh, Golmo versus the furwing? That seems that seems maybe a little bit more balanced out. Ooh, I have a furple as well. Maybe I use the furple. Maybe I, maybe I battle with the furple against the Elkhorn. I haven't seen them operate. Golmo, we at least have we at least have shown him off a little bit, huh? Okay, we'll see. I have more characters to use than I originally expected. All right, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. See you next time.